the theory of doing the right thing to protect children explains how Tanzanians are trying to be responsible citizens in a changing country. It explains the context in which people take action or don't take action, in which children suffer, and in which protectors face a dilemma. Do I protect a child and face the costs, or do I walk by? It describes why some people choose to take action to protect a child and others don't. And it describes how protectors improvise as they protect a child. It explains how protectors develop a toolbox and it talks about how we transform our identity to be warrior activists for children. I conclude by explaining what are the implications for agencies and individuals who want more people to better protect children in Tanzania. In Tanzania, people who are taking action to protect children ask themselves, what is the right thing to do? They are confronted in situations where children are suffering and in situations where few adults take action to protect them and where there is no child protection system. So they feel required to step up and take a stand. To understand why this is such an issue for them, you have to understand the context in which children suffer and the context in which people are trying to be a responsible citizen in Tanzania. This is a country where the elite live a contradiction. They claim the values of democracy, participation, institution building, good governance, but they actually practice values where they take the rents, they take the value of productivity from the country and they shut down political, popular, and economic space for others, for others, for the masses. The consequence of this is that the masses are unable to mobilize, and many people are left out. They are trapped in their own histories of childhood pain. They face the insecurity that comes when one shock can push you off the edge into destitu destitution, and they tend to improvise the care of their children. In Tanzania, too many children are suffering because their carers are improvising. Children are neglected, victims of abuse, discriminated against. For many, their very prospects in their adult life are sabotaged by adults. And in the face of this, few people take action to protect them and the ineffective child protection system is unable to intervene. What makes protectors different from many other Tanzanians is that when they see a child suffer, they decide to do the right thing. Why do they do this? These are people who see the impacts of child suffering on the child's functioning, on their behavior, on their psychology, on their well-being but they also see the impact of children's suffering on society. They know that if children suffer, the nation will burn. But these protectors also know that taking action will cost them. They know that they will be gossiped about. They know that they will incur a financial cost. They know it will take time. They know they will be criticized. And they know that they may not necessarily have the skills or the connections to properly help the child. But none, nonetheless, they decide to act. They say, we're together with children. Protectors decide to protect children because they possess an Ujasiri mindset. Ujasiri is literally bravery or courage. But in protectors, it's something more. Protectors believe that children are blameless. Protectors say, I can't just walk by and do nothing. Protectors hope that children will pay forward the help they have received. So as protectors take action, they improvise. What are protectors doing? Protectors are typically giving to children, taking a moral stand, or saving a life. When they give, they give their time, they give their space and their homes, 
and they give children the necessary things they need to be able to live. Food, clothes, education. When they take a moral stand, they are often interrupting violence, they are defending children's rights, and they are campaigning on behalf of children, for example, children who are vulnerable, children who've been orphaned, or children whose access to schooling has been stopped because of disability. Protectors often save a life. They come across accidents, they give first aid, they rescue children in situations where they're confronted with a snake or when they have been attacked by a wild animal. As protectors take action to protect children, they're confronted with questions. Questions about how to proceed, questions about how to resolve obstacles, questions about how to tap into the resources of others who may help them. And as they resolve these questions, they draw on strengths. Protectors draw on their spiritual intelligence. They draw on their moral wisdom. They draw on their intellect as they consider different options. In repeatedly protecting children and in repeatedly answering these questions, protectors build what I call an improvisational toolbox. And this toolbox has positive emotions in it. It has moral wisdom that enables protectors to see how best to intervene. It has a set of skills related to conflict resolution, related to questioning, related to listening. And it has a set of relationships that protectors draw upon. In using that toolbox, protectors are able to better protect children. And as they better protect children, they do so more often. They intervene more often when they see a child suffer. And as they do so, their Ujassiri mindset grows. Their tools become more. And they start to be more successful in resolving the issues that children face. As they repeatedly go through this cycle, their very identity starts to transform. And they identify as a warrior activist for children. This is what they do, this is who they are. For those of us who are keen to encourage more people to better protect children, the question is, what does doing the right thing and the theory I've explained tell us? This theory tells us three things. It tells us that if we want to stop people saying it's none of my business when they see a child suffer. We need to start building their levels of empathy. At the moment they are blind to children's suffering because they live inside their own heads. They are not living in relationship with other people outside of their family. And so we need to inculcate empathy and in doing so, start to build the Ujassiri mindset that is so fundamental to taking action. This theory also tells us that many people are protecting children. Many people are trying to do the right thing, but they do so as individuals. The power of these individual actions can only be catalyzed when you bring these individuals together in groups. And so there is an opportunity to create a space for a community of protectors where we come together sharing our desire to do the right thing and we learn together how to do the right thing better. There is a power in group action that at the moment we are missing. And we are missing out on it because there is not a space for people to come together as a group. The final thing that we, we are told by this theory is that we have to start influencing. We have to start influencing planners, politicians, technocrats, professionals to invest in child protection systems. And there is a power, there is a potential power in this group of protectors who are already doing the right thing. The question will be how do you build the improvisational toolkit 
so that it builds people's capacities to influence others to also do the right thing.